So, would you like to sure. start off? Sure. Um, we're here tonight to talk about the Middle Street Intersection Project at Route 9. We are approaching the 100% design phase. The project is expected to go out to be advertised for bids this year before the end of September. It's uh, federally funded and uh, state funded. And as we uh, go through the final stages of preparing to advertise this and make it acceptable for federal highways to fund, there are a few things that we need uh, basically from the town. Um, if I can just go back and give a, a little history, this project is actually over 10 years old. Uh, back around 2005, we started looking at what kind of improvements could be made out here at the intersection. Uh, basically, uh, for the concern of crashes. And we had a meeting, uh, I think it was with the Historic Commission, or it might have been the Joint Historic and Select Board. And um, we had intended to address that safety issue by adding left turn lanes to Route 9, so that the left turns would get out of through traffic. And uh, of course, in order to do that, we needed to widen, um, add width to the pavement, and um, Someone asked, well, is there any other way you can handle that, uh, improve that safety issue? So we went back and looked at it, and uh, we basically implemented the signal uh, timing that's working out there now, where eastbound and westbound each have their own uh, green time, so that anybody turning left out of those traffic streams does not compete with the through traffic from the other direction. So we basically maintained that in this project, but this project also, uh, upgrades all of the signal equipment. It actually uh, puts a mast arm which holds the traffic signals out over the roadway on each approach of the before those mast arms. Today there's just one that holds uh, one light over the middle of the road and then there's posts on all the corners. And that's really not a very good visibility. So uh, our plan now is to make those traffic signal upgrades, do some widening for improved bicycle accommodation, uh, rebuild the sidewalks, uh, and basically any widening that we do need to do uh, for the bicycle accommodation is happening away from Town Hall, which was another request that, uh, that the town made. So um, in, in doing this work, uh, one of the issues we have is that we do need temporary rights um, when we rebuild the sidewalks and we uh, work on the uh, earth that's behind those sidewalks in order to rebuild them and grade them back in to match the existing ground. We need temporary easements, and some of the easements we need are on town-owned property. So uh, maybe to cover that, Sue Draves from our uh, right-of-way bureau has some information as far as uh, the town-owned property and the uh, easements or rights of entries that we need. Hi, thank you for um, allowing us to come speak with you tonight. Um, I think everybody should have a copy of, the, there's three temporary easements, so there's three 11 by 17 plans. Um, there's a temporary easement in front of the library, and then two on the side of the road going down towards um, the school. So the temporary easement, as Rich said, basically everything we're doing is within the state roadway. <coughs> So the temporary easement is up to allow for loaning seating and grading on the property. The temporary easement will be in place for five years. It will be recorded on the town's deed. So. <coughs> we have a I have uh, the original, so I'm hoping for signature. Now, we're doing um, a similar process, but a little different with all the residents who are part of the project. Um, I don't know, do you want me to explain what they're their process is a little different than I'm hoping that the board will do tonight. Um, you mean are you interested in hearing that? Side? Yes, there are residents up and down between basically Reddish or Cumberland Farms to the Farm Museum. Mm -hmm. And um, are you interested in knowing the process for what we're doing with the residents, or is that too much for tonight? I think, yeah. I think what, night. I think what we're more interested like in is how close are you getting to this town hall? I'd like to hear for the rest of the residents who you haven't contacted yet. Okay. Or have you contacted them? So why don't you do the easement part, and then we'll let the okay, so engineers go back to talk the, about where it's going. All of the, the work that's being done is within the state highway layout. Right. So the red line on um, the plans, is the existing state highway layout. 
So there's going to be a temporary easement <coughs> kind, of, kind of close to the town hall, but it will only be for Loman Seaway. So the contractor will be able to do grading and Loman So you're not actually moving the road no. closer to no. the town hall? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm sure it does. Yeah, it's, it's very close right because now. Because it's historical. I, mean, yeah, I don't yeah. think it could take too much shake, more shaking than it gets right now right. from the yeah. traffic. This has become um, like Indy 500 out here right. some days, you know. Yeah. It's actually kind of fun to sit in this chair when somebody goes by sometimes. <laughs> Some of the trucks say that, yeah. Bounces quite Shakes well. the building. Yeah, yeah. You know, so if it was there any closer than that, I'd, I'd right. Yeah, I would like that. Yeah. yeah, so everything's on the other side. And the sidewalks will be concrete as opposed to the, what they are currently, the asphalt. Yeah. So it should be great. I mean, I think it'll be a really nice project. It'll have a lot of connectivity and it'll be nice, smooth. So I think it's a really good project. And so great. And and we, then how are you going to go about getting the easements from the Okay, property? so here's what's happening right now. There's several different steps that the residents will have when we'll, we'll visit them. The first thing is happening right now and should be wound up by May 1st. And right away, Avis, which I'm one, will visit um, all the residents, provide them with a plan like you have, um, and the eminent domain brochure, the right of way brochure, explain their rights, and also get information from them about their property so we can pass that on if there's any special concerns, if there's any like um, a sprinkler in the walkway or anything that we they we'll pass it on to the contractor. So that's phase one. Then after that, um, We'll have a group of appraisers, probably from the state, come out and appraise the property for just compensation. After that, we'll be back either probably with a letter, an email, whatever, to provide an offer. And then follow up with asking if they have any concerns, questions um, about the offer. And then the final thing will be, it's called the notification of award of damages, when we will be visiting them again and providing them additional paperwork, which will include the, the notice of award, and then eventually they'll be, receive a check. So that's it. So it's a it's a long process, but um, it's very smooth. We wrap it up nice and, and we give them all of our contact information. If anybody has any questions, they can call at any time. Usually, we, you know, email back and forth, call back and forth, whatever. Or if you guys ever have any questions. And so, so just how many temporary easements are there? Um, how many permanent easements are there? There's no per There's one permanent easement, um, a utility easement, that's right here. So, but the rest are all temps. I have to count. Um, like 20, 22. And only one permanent taking. Right, right, yeah. So any, anybody who you're talking to and you're going to have a temporary take and they get the land back eventually. And they right, get, the so easement stays on the deed for five years. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And when, when will this process start with the engineering aspect of it to start the roadway thing? Could work? going to work with you on doing water lines and things like that. Right. Well, the engineering is almost done. We do have the uh, water line improvements that the town wants to make at the same time under the same contract. Okay. They are already incorporated into the plans at the 75% stage. So that, that water work is in the project already. And when the contractor does those items of work, the bills for those items of work will go to the town. But it will be constructed all at the same time under the same contract. So <coughs> it's not going to be under the sidewalk, correct, or is it? Um, no, I think the it's water line is actually under the road, I think. Under the road line here. on the north side. Oh, right, on the north side, but through this section here, we're just changing over services from one side to the other, putting them on the 12 inch main on, these, on the south side here, and getting rid of the old cast iron main that's through here and all the way to East Street, but we're not going to East Street, we're only going 400 feet past this intersection, correct? Right, this project ends just by the Farm Museum. There are future projects that may need to touch on here. That's so my next Houston. question. No, I, I, or, the governor has $120 million. Are you people involved in going any further right now, past, up to East Street or past East Street? In the next couple of years, three years, five years, what is your plan? Engineering-wise, everybody's asked. Yes, and uh, Michael Trepanier from our environmental division <laughs> in Boston yes. is actually going to be managing that future work that we are just getting underway with uh, engineering. And Michael, would you like sure. To so I'm here uh, uh, for two reasons. Um, one in uh, supporting Rich and uh, our team for the Middle Street project. Um, and um, dealing with regulatory statutory compliance with the temporary easements 
a town of properties and come back to that. Um, but I've also been um, asked to manage the environmental process and preliminary design process for uh, addressing a long-term fix for Route 9 east of the limits of this project to East Street and then beyond to uh, Lowe's and Home Depot and the, the uh, Maple Street. The it, it's all been a plan for over 20 years. Of yes, development. right. Um, and I'll introduce Mark Kalinowski. He's uh, going to be my deputy project manager for the corridor work that we're doing. Um, we have met, Rich and I have met with the, with the uh, region and talked about um, funding priorities and um, availability of resources to, to fund long-term improvements here. The unfortunate nature, um, well, the unfortunate fact is the region did have some monies appropriated and programmed in the transportation improvement plan for uh, fiscal year 17 or 16, 17, um, for a segment that was being picked up by MassDOT um, that had originally been done as mitigation to the Lowe's uh, development site. Uh, upon further review of the design that Lowe's had prepared, uh, we found that there was a higher level environmental review required and we also felt that it should be reviewed in conjunction with the entire corridor improvements that were originally proposed, as I think you're alluding to, 10 years ago in the Connecticut River Crossing study. Yeah. Um, so now we're looking at, is the, are those limits of work really the smart, are they smart, they make <laughs> the most sense? And what, are, what, are, what do we see as targeted priorities? What does the region see as targeted priorities? And then of course, the next step is to come to you. Well, you guys well, I think we are because this is the next step and the next question I have. You know, they came through with the train. UMass has a subsidiary in Springfield now. Mm -hmm. They're using this corridor for transportation, so I would think that it would take a priority. And and, I, and we are uh, certainly. Mark and I are prioritizing this work as we're pretty excited to be managing it. Um, but there's a process we have to go through. There's an environmental review process. We have to develop conceptual design alternatives, looking at. Um, what are the existing conditions? Traffic out on this corridor definitely seems pretty unique. There's, I was here at five o'clock uh, watching operations here at East Street, and then um, moved up to, I mean, the middle, and then moved up to East, and then all the way down. And it's there's no, um, it's not a t traditional five p.m. peak. It's a little more spotty. Clearly, there's some influence from the institutions and uh, regional movements, but um, that's all stuff we need to look at and determine what's the right cross section. What are the environmental impacts associated with that, and then begin disclosing that through uh, the state review process. And then the third step is the infrastructure, its age, and and our funding. You know, for the water and the sewer and the rest of our utilities under the road. Right. And, uh, we just want to make sure that everybody's on the same page and aware of what's going on here. Right. right. And we're just getting started. So you know, I mean, that this this frankly, the reason I one of the reasons I'm here tonight, as I said, is. To talk about the uh, the intersection project that we're we're, we're nearing completion, um, but also to kind of give you all a heads up that hey, we're committed to, to dealing with the, the issues in the corridor. We want to work with you all very closely, um, and uh, and just let you know we're just getting started. Which brings me to my last question on your project that you're underway with here right now, the drainage that you're putting all this water into. That's totally falling apart. Um, yep, we're that's aware of that I, concern, I and <laughs> I think it, mainly that's the pipes that south of Route 9 that take yep. the drainage down to the ditch past the ball field, and we are aware that those need work, and we will be looking to address them, but not as part of this project independently. So that's something that uh, we will continue to work with Mike on. And, uh, How much more drainage are you going to be putting in that existing line right now? Because there's another level. Of it. Right. There's again. There's only minor widening happening for this project, just uh, to get the bike lanes in, and you know the quantity of runoff. I mean, what we're taking is a little area out of the grass strip that is being turned from grass to pavement. So it's it's not a really significant change in the volume of runoff. You have That'd seen the DVDs of the condition of the steel pipe. I have. You're all aware of that. I have. Uh, I don't know if Mike has seen the video. I have not. But no. Yes, I've seen the video and again. Um, it's not something that we would be able to address in the timeline of the intersection project, 
but it is something that we do intend to address and will keep working on. Uh, and one of the things we need, and I think that we confirmed, is um, there are permanently no separate permanent drainage rights even for that outlet across the town property, which should be rectified with a permanent drainage easement. And if the property ever changes hands, that, that right for the drainage will exist. Um, but definitely the condition of the pipes, we're aware of that. And I, and I do have um, a separate state funded um, drainage, pro drainage contracts that depending on the size of the work, I could even do potentially under an existing contract. When we get the exact estimate and know how much it is, we'll have to see again whether we can fund it through that process or not. But it is something that we're continuing to work on and we're aware of, but it's just not going to be able to make it in time to be done this project. Which is currently funded on, on Which this year's Which is currently funded and plan. needs to be advertised for bids before the end of September. Um, and as far as the other infrastructure in the roadway on Route 9, uh, again, spoken with Mike on that. Um, our projects realistically are several years away, and I'm not sure that the town infrastructure can, you know, that the town wants to wait that long to do that additional work. Exactly. We just um, spoke about it at the last meeting. Right. We've got $130,000 into repairs and <coughs> a $1.2 million water main replacement project for the next stage or the next section of your work. So if, if the town water project is more urgent, then, you know, they can't wait for our future projects, which again are years away. Um, then the town could advertise and do that work separately under a permit. Uh, I know there is concern about the uh, standard for state highway uh, work of that nature is that uh, the trench be backfilled with global fill, which is an expensive item. Could that, um, be, could could that there, be addressed with the state at that point well, when, when we do move ahead with it? There, there is a process where if the town requests a waiver, knowing that there are the future roadway projects that are going to be addressing the roadway and the pavement in the foreseeable future, that you could get potentially a waiver from the need to do the flow of fill, um, you know, just do regular backfill of the trench, let it settle over the winter, and then repave it the next year is basically the, the typical waiver that would be considered. Well, so we, a, we, mean, can, we can definitely do that. So we need to decide My opinion, ourselves. along with most of the board, I feel, we want a good relationship with you people, but we, we need to address our issues also. Right. You know, it doesn't do any of us any good to put a coat of tar over the top of the road and then have to dig it up in two weeks, you know. It doesn't work very well that way. So I guess we need to, now we know kind of there's timeline, we need to sit down and work on our timeline. So Right, right. so we're looking at for the, for <coughs> once this work is done here, we'll bring that to, to the Farm Museum. The, the remainder, uh, we we think, and you know, this is certainly open for comment, we think that the the highest priority uh, to address in the corridor is, is the next intersection at East Street and address some of the geometric and safety issues there. Uh, hopefully get some, improve some operational uh, capacity uh, with, you know, new equipment and timing and, and whatever else we determine through our, the, the analysis we're now undergoing, um, <clears throat> how to make that intersection work best, deal with some of the safety issues that we've addressed uh, or identified at the Maple Street intersection. There's a, a crash cluster there that we've identified, mass dots identified um, on the southeast quadrant, and uh, and then deal with the corridor as a whole, whole. And we don't know what that means yet. You know, um, there was a assumption in the the study that that means four lanes from one end to the other, uh, but we're looking very seriously at what whether or not that's necessary. If we can get a little more bang for our buck um, from the regional funds so that we can address some of the traffic issues, but um, uh, still serve serve the community and the region as a whole. Okay. Good. Is there, I think the board is, any questions from the board? I, I actually, if I could, the, the other issue I'm, before, I know you guys are anxious to move on. I can, I can tell, go, uh, go for it. Um, the, the you other, you the, want something else from us too, we have to do. There's the, the, the one, yes, yeah, so the, there's, there's the right of way easements, but I also, part of the issue, Part of the reason I'm here is with my environmental planner hat. Uh, there's a federal regulation that protects um, parklands, open spaces, yeah. and um, and historic properties. 
In this case, the two of the temporary easements uh, that are required on these two properties here, the former North Star School and uh, the Hopkins Academy, um, are potential, have potential for as to serve as recreational properties. Now, what I need from the board is something in writing saying that this ball field here doesn't serve a substantial walk-on recreational use. Uh, it appears that it doesn't, but... Well, actually, what you want is a, a statement from us saying that your project will have no impact on any uses we have on it is really what you're asking for, right? Well, that, could, that would be a later phase if we did, if there was a recreational use there. Either way... There is a recreational use there. Beyond so school activities. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we would have to give you, the, that's really what you're asking for. Right. Well, so then that brings us to a different vehicle where it's very similar to the sign off that you're going to give for the, the property rights. It's um, a determination by this board that, the, that um, based on the plans we're, we're offering, that it won't impact it and that there's no, that the temporary occupancy, temporary easements don't result in, in the impact. Yes, that's correct. That they're minor, that they're short in duration, and and that the the officials with jurisdiction don't ex expect that adverse impact. So yes, that's that's correct. Okay. And further down the road, we're going to have to do the same thing if you do move along with the drainage. Correct. Yes. Correct. So we have one question from the audience. Yeah. Uh, relative to the uh, from the building committee standpoint, uh, we had the uh, building committee did express a concern regarding. Uh, the uh, widening project and the relative to the masonry construction of these historic buildings and the vibration that they might see during um, the repair of the surface, especially with this building being, you know, less than 10 feet away, and we have the former North Star School, the Russell School building, which um, you know certainly is an old brick building facing some issues with the brick and mortar and. Of course, we have the, uh, the library and senior center not too far away as well. Part of our concerns have been, what will uh, will the state take any uh, measures to monitor the potential vibration that the, those buildings are going to face? Telltale gauges will not detect the amplitude or uh, the amount of impact of, of, of vibration that they're going to see. And uh, we've been uh, expressing some concerns to some members of the deep mass dot to try to uh, you know get some response that you know. One, are you going to be taking, keeping an eye on it? And two, if there's any damage, will there be reparations? Yes. Um, two parts. Uh, one thing we can do uh, that we've done before is prior to the construction starting, we can have the contractor do a pre-construction survey of the basement and take photographs and document the condition beforehand just so that if there's any question of whether something was due to the construction or not, it's been documented before the construction starts. And we can uh, put in the specifications for the contractor controls on the compaction and you know vibration, so that we, we don't impact the building. And and again, all of the work is from basically the existing curb line out as far as the roadway construction, and then just grading the area from the curb up to the building to replant the grass uh, on the slope. So. Um, but there'd be nothing closer to the building as far as, you know, the actual roadway construction. So we'd like to ask for that. Okay. Thank you. So is there any other questions? Yeah, I had a few questions. I, I actually live on Middle Street, so I travel this intersection every day to work. Um, you had mentioned that uh, there's some additional turning lanes being added. Is this different from no. the fall plant? No. Okay. Um, our original proposal when we started way back was to add turn lanes on Route 9. And again, that created much more substantial impacts. So the and so we've thing. taken those out so that it basically the traffic operation will look like it does today. Okay, so the traffic signal will do in the same pattern that it currently does. Yes. Okay. So, so your traffic well. study of what you have existing seems to be working, so you guys are satisfied Correct. with that right now. Yeah. Yeah. We've made a trade-off. It could traffic operationally, it could work better with the left turn lanes yeah. and the two <coughs> through traffic movements going at the same time, given how heavy they are. Yeah. But the trade-off we made is that we have a little worse traffic operation, but less impacts on, yeah. on the area. Yeah. Will you be making them uh, right turn on reds? Um, also for the intersection? If, if there are prohibitions out there today, and I don't recall, if it says yes. uh, no turn don't on red, on red. Yeah. Uh, I expect that will remain. All right. So, which, um, excuse me. Why couldn't we 
have a right turn on red if we have if we have traffic coming on Route 9 from Northampton to Amherst. Why on 47 coming south can't you have a right turn onto Route 9? There's absolutely no impact in that at all. It's just the, well, I can try to find why we put up the prohibition in the first okay. place. That would be appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, physically, yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you wish to ask us to do something? Yes. Um, Again, there's three rights of entry for the temporary easements. Um, I'm hoping the board will consider signing them. All right. We do have the right for compensation, as I said before, with the residents. Um, but in general, the town signed the right of entry. So. So is there a motion? A motion to sign the right of entry. Second. There is any more discussion or discussion about compensation? You guys All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Yeah. 